everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I finally got this little dipshit back on here. My good old friend Philip on another reading. Sub beast mode, how we doing? I'm doing great. I, uh, I'm very excited for uh, what's in store. As am I, as am I. I believe it's another Danganronpa story, as always, because I cannot think of anything else we have in common. There's Wait, nothing. <laughs> Wait, really? I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm guessing. Like, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just making you feel feel sorry. I'm, oh, not, I'm joking. I'm joking. Hey, Dang Rob is not a bad uh, anime game. It's oh no, no, it's not at all. Not at all. In fact, uh, the, the last time we saw each other, an amazement. Uh, great con, by the way. Great con. Yeah. Uh, oh, like quite a few uh, Dang Rob cosplayers. I got to see uh, Sonia. Never mind. I got to see. Uh, a lot of Junko, a lot of Monokuma. Mm -hmm. Really good, really good stuff, really good stuff. Oh shit, were you there Sunday? I was there on, yeah, I was actually there for, for pretty long on Sunday. I got to see uh, the uh, idols, the idol show that was going on, and I was doing my last rounds of the game room. I was playing a lot of melee throughout the whole weekend, and uh, to till the very end on Sunday when the uh, game room closed at 4, I, uh, <laughs> I was still there with the same people I was playing with all throughout the time, just about, you know, I made some new friends, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I was dressed up as Kurumi during, uh, during Sunday. I want to say I saw that. I want to say I saw that, because I remember, at least on Instagram, you posted something, uh, with her. Yeah, I love I the way I did her makeup, because, you know, because mm -hmm. so she has, like, half her face, like, covered. I don't have the yeah. makeup on that side, so it's just, like, you uncover <laughs> it, and it's, like, bald! Bald! <laughs> bald. Bald. Let me get the King, King Neptune gift. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, so yeah. you you picked so. out this one. Well, I was like, what kind of Dangarampa character should we do this time? Because there's a there's a lot of different ones. Different. I mean, there's like what, like forty eight plus characters for us to choose from. And yes, shit. but you know, there's one, one very stinky girl that I really really <laughs> like, and she reminds me of another very stinky girl. Oh God! But slightly less crazy, who's from Blue Archive. Oh, g what a. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, her name is Ozeki Yui. Ui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me get her up. Let me get this rascal up here. Usually when I see people talk about their favorite character, they're usually hyping them up. <laughs> you just like... You're like, yeah, she's I'm, I'm, very sneaky. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that, that, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we have pulled up a Toko Fukawa X Reader, and I'm very excited. It's from our good old friend Hello Dear. We read their Mondo in the, um, in the Byakuya Togami one as well. So I'm expecting high things from this one. I feel like we read another one of theirs, too. Oh, Sai we... Sayaka, yeah. Sayaka yeah, yeah, yeah. Mizano. That was the very last one we did before I just fell off the face of the earth for yeah, like four months. You did, like, peace, you did the whole peace thing and <laughs> just faded out of existence. <laughs> Yeah, I just, bro, I, I was off the radar. I was off the radar. No one could find me. Yeah, not even I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but here can, I am. Yeah, this one just basically just called Toko Fukawa X Reader, and the description reads Y N slash okay Y N la. Oh, fuck. Your name, last name, has always despised the ultimate writing prodigy. How she couldn't stop lusting after Togami, the way that she could act like it was so normal. To her, it was just more than just creepy. Things only get worse when she walks into said female one night, only to come face to face with a serial killer. Completed, female X reader. Do not, I do not own any Dang Rob character nor their thing. This, it's only a story. <laughs> Yeah, well, my name is Spike Shunsoft, and I own all of it. <laughs> and I'm gonna read it. I can't wait. All right, so we already came up with her name of this uh, this reader, and we were very cool, and we came up with the best name. Her name is uh, Hardy, uh, Hardy Hot Ham Sandwich. <laughs> a hot Ham hot and Cheese. Hot Ham and Cheese. <laughs> Gotta be the Hardy's Hot Ham and Cheese. Yeah, we were hungry Last when thing. we made this. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't, can't go wrong with a nice, uh, nice meal from Hardee's and uh, Carl's Jr. for those who are 
on the West Coast somehow you know, listening to this. You know I've never been to Hardee's. Really? No, never been to Hardee's or like Arby's. Never been. I, 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 I've never the been. The next one was going to be the <laughs> Arby's roast beef sandwich. <laughs> we can still do that. I just never eaten there before. They have the meats. I know. I, I, their commercials are very funny. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. They it's have, like uh, the Whopper <laughs> from Burger King. They have a sauce. That, like, they, they have the fucking Arby sauce. That shit is just plain sugar. That is just sugar in water. Oh, shit. Why didn't this someone and, tell me sooner? I would have eaten there, like, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, che I checked the ingredients. I was like, okay, what, what's what's in this to make it, like, you know, taste the way it does? Is there, like, you know, kind of spices? Is there, like, paprika? Is there, uh, you know... Hab habanero, uh, I mean, it wasn't hot enough to have habanero in it, obviously, but, you know, I just look and I see just corn syrup, uh, a, a bunch of things that no one, no one would be able to pronounce if you showed it to them. <laughs> it, it was like, oh, oh, okay, okay. I, I, I kind of turned, that kind of turned me off from using the RB sauce, but, uh. You, I thought you were about to be like, yeah, I read the ingredients and it said they put like 80 cups of sugar in in the in, the, in this packet. <laughs> well, 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 you know, you know, let me, I want to see, I want to see. You, you, we're, we're down the rabbit hole already. Yeah. We might as well, we might as well finish it before we get started reading how about this sugar? very stinky woman and how much I love her. Yeah, I, I think someone. I'm trying to remember who in in my server loves this woman. Also, I think I think it's Turkish. They also like Toko Fukawa. I That's can't remember good. what I said. I think I said Smash for for Genocide Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I I like I like both her and her alter ego. They're very very funny. I like when Genocide Jill comes out and mm -hmm. just. She 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 kills all the bad guys in Ultra Despair Girls, my favorite game of all time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh. I mean, it's the best one, man. Yeah, that's so true. Didn't people hate that game when it came out? Because they're like, it's different. It's yeah. not Dane Rampa. Yeah, people, <laughs> people still look at it and go, for shame, for shame. But I think I've it's lived. cool, man. It, and I got a life grew out of it. Her name is Komaru Nayegi. <laughs> no, no, I'm not ditching Toko. It's always been this way. Yeah, I have two arms, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It sounds like me with my, with my like, like people I sim for. I'm like, guys, guys, settle down. There's room for everyone. It's like, it's Vox and like Sanji and like <laughs> Mr. Puzzles and shit. <laughs> <laughs> A colorful mm. cast of characters. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. All well, right. I believe I believe I'm ready to start on chapter one. All right. Do you want to be heads or tails for this? I choose heads. All right. It's tails. I get to read. All right. We do uh, three and three as per these twelve, twelve paragraph. I suppose yeah, twelve stanza. Twelve stanza uh, chapters. Yeah, we can do that. Oh wait, wait! I see something already. Uh, eye color. What's her eye color gonna be? Yellow. Yellow, like the the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Is she watching you again? Hearty ha hot ham and cheese asks Biakia Togami, looking up from her book. Obviously annoyed, the blonde nodded, pushing his glasses up. Yeah, she is. Silence. Neither of the two were very talkative or social, but their relationship could still be described as being friends. Her yellow eyes focused on him again. It was obvious that she was thinking in that moment. Why don't you say anything to make her go away? He shrugged, having seen that expression too often for his, for his own good or hers. Seriously, what's wrong with that girl? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, she's just she she's just a little guy, guys. Don't be mean to her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The thing that bothers her the most was the fact that Toko Fukawa, the girl obsessed with the blonde, wouldn't budge or go away until Byakuya looked at her. She's too shy to look him in the eyes, but not shy enough to stalk him. If only that fool would stop wasting her time. For a few more minutes, 
She shut her book closed, bookmarking it before she did so. I'll be right back, Tagami. Not even waiting for a response, she walked towards the ultimate writing prodigy. Said girl froze on the spot, watching her come closer and closer. Why can't you just stop watching him? He may not be bothered by it anymore. That doesn't mean people around him aren't. It seemed like her words didn't get recognized by her. Instead, she just looked away, fiddling her hands nervously. Hey, did you even hear a single word of mine? The female flinched and quickly fled the scene. What the? Hey, come back here. Hardy's hot ham and cheese didn't have a chance. Toko was already gone, running down the hallway as fast she could. Seriously, she mumbled, looking away, her eyes meeting the ones of Byakia, and he had raised an eyebrow. If you didn't notice Togami, she was too busy with focusing on you. So no, I couldn't talk her out of it. <laughs> he let out a, s a small sigh and just nodded. Alright, I guess I should have expected that. Maybe I should try to talk to her again. That is it, pretty in character. Yeah. It was the- oh fuck, what color hair does pink, she have? Pink hair. Pink hair? What, for the ham. For, oh shit, you're right. It was the pink haired <laughs> female's turn to raise an eyebrow. Talk to her? You mean like when you told her to take a shower because she smells bad? Or the time when you downright told her to never face you again? It doesn't seem to have convincing results. A small scoff appeared on his perfect features. He is perfect after. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So true. <laughs> Maybe, but she doesn't bother me for a whole week after that. I'm making progress. Also, it would be better if you didn't do something like that again. That girl's crazy and could hurt you. She was surprised by how serious he sounded. Yeah, that's what I sounded like. Serious. Crazy? <laughs> Definitely. Why would she be stalking you if she wasn't? But hurt me? Seriously? Hardy's hot ham and cheese looked at him. Her expression skeptical. Yes, I mean it. You should be really careful when she's around. She scoffed, and no, I'm not joking if you were going to ask that. Pink-haired female was silent for a few more minutes. She just couldn't understand why someone like Toko Fukawa would be able to hurt her. But if her friend, who was normally cold and didn't care about anyone, told her that it was serious, she maybe shouldn't question it. I've read about stalkers that have become murderers. Is this one of those cases? She didn't dare voice her concerns, instead giving the blonde a nod. Alright, I personally don't see anything dangerous in her, but I will take your word for it. If only she knew what was soon going to happen. Oh, oh, it's, it's foreshadowing! I love this person, is like, they just slammed their hand on the keyboard and said, We're friends with Togami? That's me too, good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, that's already... That's already a, uh, very slim chance. Yeah. I th oh, I was so excited. I thought I got a Hardee's commercial on the side. Like an ad. Oh it wasn't. God. I'm sad. It's like, join over 60,000 people who have experienced air sculpt difference. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I got that you block origin rolling. Nice. My, uh, my Opera GX isn't kicking in yet. <laughs> Usually it's like, this ad cannot load. I'm like, perfect. Keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Nice. Well, Great Hardy... way to resist advertising. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <no, for> <laughs> 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 well, Hardy was rather skeptical, she still stood true to her promise towards her friend. Whenever she spotted Toko Fukawa, she would turn her head away, ignoring her whole existence. Even though she wanted to confront the female, Byakuya's words just wouldn't get out of her head. I feel like someone's watching me. The pink-haired female drew nervous and looked around, though she didn't see anything. Maybe I'm just imagining things. I should just forget about that girl. She's making me paranoid. She shook, <laughs> shaking her head, she made her way towards the library of the school. It wasn't like her at all to ignore an issue, to suddenly feel scared. Hardy, hot ham and cheese did always had always been a person to immediately confront a problem, as well as the cause of it, no matter who or what it was. 
I don't like this at all. Hopefully a, hopefully a good book will make me feel better. Also, I want to know, what's what's our talent that we're in this school to begin with? Well, very clearly we are a bookworm, so... Mm -mm. Well, we already have the writing prodigy and all that. I believe that is Toko. Mm-hmm. What the so, fuck could we be? May maybe... Maybe we're just very good at writing too, but we're just not the best at it. Mm. It's not the best at it. We're 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 in the reserve course. <laughs> <laughs> We've just built like Makoto. We, we we got drawn from a ticket, and we're like, oh my god, that's me! <laughs> Let's go. She <clears throat> she and a fuck. So something, something's in my throat. Are you dying right now from from your excitement? <laughs> this chapter. I'm, I'm I'm eating a payday bar. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot those exist. It's been a while since I've gotten, like, actual candy. I work at a gas station, it's hard to ignore it. Plus, my younger brother found a glitch in the system at Food Lion, and he got these for, like, 25, 24 cents per. So that's nice. Damn, bit I needed those when I was back in high school. <laughs> Facts. She reached up to grieve, grab one of the books. Only to freeze when she suddenly heard rustling in the distance. The female jumped, looking around. What the? No one is in here, right? The library seemed empty when I came in. She wasn't able to spot anyone, making her even more anxious. As fast as she could, she put the book away. Before running out of the room. Why am I running? Am I becoming a scaredy cat now? It's all Tsugami's fault. If... If he didn't tell me about her, I wouldn't be this paranoid. In her panic state, she locked herself in the bathroom stall, hoping to be able to catch her breath in there. A few moments passed, until she heard the door open, making her heart skip a beat. No, I have to stop panicking. This is a public restroom, after all. They having a panic attack, that's, that's, that's scary. Yeah. Wouldn't want to wouldn't wanna be there. Nonetheless, she held her breath, waiting to hear the footsteps, but those footsteps weren't coming. Whoever opened the door was still standing in his frame, holding one said, holding open said entrance. What's wrong with that person? Can I even calm down in peace? Or are they still debating if they really need to use a restroom? A few minutes passed until Hardy finally got fed up. Her nerves were shot up, her state panicked. The thought of someone following her just made her want to scream. Scream at the person who to just leave her alone. She took a deep breath and then stood up to open the stall door. Who are you? And who are you? She didn't finish her sentence because no one was in the restroom. Am I crazy? C crazy? I was crazy once. They put me in a room. <laughs> I never heard the door close. Her confusion was soon clear when she looked at the door. A small piece of paper was making sure that the door would not close. No, I'm not going crazy. Someone was following me. They even made sure to vanish without letting me know. Someone is playing with me. Pink-haired female threw the paper into a trash bin, splashed her face with cold water. Then she looked in the mirror and right behind her. But who <laughs> would make the effort to scare me like this? Have I ever done someone wrong? Not that I know of. Her thoughts were racing. She just couldn't think of anyone who could dislike her enough to do all these things to her, even after she told the stinky girl off. When she stepped out of the restroom, she spotted someone running in the distance. Someone that had two long braids, purple braids. No way. Biakia's words echoed through her mind. No way that girl is stalking me right now. I did my best to ignore her. She gulped. This was not going to be easy. Why is Stalk the first me, comment... Mommy Toko. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I don't beautiful. see the problem in this. <laughs> you know what? My kind of people. My yep. kind of people. This, this fan fiction is for you, Philip. <laughs> what can I say? I, I picked it for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need my scissor mommy now. I, I need to read I, some I need comfort. Her now, if, if I do not, if I do not get the stinky girl with multiple personalities, I'm going to fucking lose it. 
No, that's some straight up fat. That's me with TV men. If I don't get a TV man on my desk by 5.30, I'm gonna lose it. I prefer TV girl. Not Cheesy music you. reference. Wait, you're gonna have to show me that. I, I need to know all the TV people. Alright, I, I, can, I can do that. And when I mean like read. TV, I mean like their heads of TV and the body's just like normal. <laughs> that's that's the criteria I have apparently. I, I knew I, I saw a guy at an amazement whose cosplay was basically that. Perfect. He was a TV head. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> After finding out who her stalker was, the pink haired female didn't want to go to school the next morning. She wasn't sure what would happen if Toko revealed herself at as some sort of sociopath that was thirsting after her blood. Would she be able to defend herself? Nonetheless, Hardy knew that her education was important enough to still attend class. After all, she could she could maybe see her friend again and could ask him about the weird female that had been following her. He still owes me an exclamation. He really owes me. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he really owes me an exclamation. <laughs> She thought while entering the hallways. The problem is, I don't know where the. I don't even know the name of his class. We might be friends, but we never even thought about exchanging our contact information. I can't text or call him either. She sighed, knowing it would be difficult to have a conversation that she wanted so badly. That girl seems to be a su tough subject for him, too. Whenever I asked him about her, he immediately grew annoyed. How am I supposed to talk to talk about her without getting the cold shoulder? Hardy's hot ham and cheese sighed, looking around the building for her friend. She still had some time before her first class started. Once again, footsteps could be heard behind her. But this time, she didn't care too much. It was a busy morning. People were still rushing to their classes. The bell hadn't rung yet. The only weird thing was that the footsteps stopped as soon as she started walking as well. Weird. Am I imagining things? The beautiful ham, pink, hair-colored female looked around, not seeing anyone. Yeah, I must be imagining things. That's all. Shru shrugging, she continued walking, soon arriving at the library, throwing a few glances through the room. She quickly realized her friend wasn't in there. Weird. He's an ultimate. Doesn't necessarily need to go to class or normally spends all of his time in here. In fact, I never met him anywhere else. The female stopped, leaning against the nearby wall. Let me think. I don't have much time left, so I should start searching after class. This was when she was about to leave. Someone rushed past her, dropping a shiny object in front of her. What? She she leaned down, picking up the dropped item. It was a pair of shiny scissors. Whoa! Lord! <laughs> Who could carry scissors so loosely that they could have get lost? There's some weird people in this building. I mean... Damn right! I mean, yeah, have you seen the other ultimates? <laughs> there's a guy that carries around hamsters, and this is the... And you're like, wow, there's... People are dropping scissors left and right! <laughs> Gumpy, my beloved. <laughs> Seeing the object made her realize that maybe the person was just in a rush and didn't think about properly closing their bag. Maybe they were running late. If that was the case, she should hurry and get them get the scissors to lost and found. This is really starting to sound like the actual games we're da -da -da. investigating. Da -da 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 -da. I need to be quick. My first class starts soon. With that in mind, she walked to the said office, turning the scissors in, of course. She couldn't tell them who had dropped them. Everything ha happened so f so fast for her to even catch a glance at the person's appearance. The rest of the day passed relatively quickly. <clears throat> Hardy's, hot ham and Hardy's hot ham and cheese's mind was always preoccupied, be it schoolwork or with her friend that she couldn't find. The latter made her grow upset whenever she thought about it. Even though they never really talked to each other when they were together, they still had been friends. Kinda weird. Maybe he's sick. Maybe I should stop at his place. Did he tell me his address once? She sighed, 
impatiently waiting for the bell to signal the end of the day. Then I should also stop by the store and go get him some medicine and soup. The bell rang. You're telling me no one's simping in the comments because there's no I, comments? What the fuck? <laughs> I, it's probably because there's a lack of Byakia, even though that would be the perfect time to say, Oh my god, where is he? Where is yeah. he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did that happen in like the second chapter? Like, where is he? <laughs> we can't find him anywhere. Wait, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to that. What? Let me see. The last chapter. Oh, chapter two. Yeah. I, well, no, I meant like in the um in in the game. <laughs> oh yeah, true, true. <laughs> All right, chapter four. It's pretty cold today. Hardy said to herself quietly, looking around the store she was in. I was just thinking the same thing. The the nice female cashier told her, giving her a smile. I always feel like my fingers are turning into ice. Hope your way home isn't too long. Oh, I'm not on my way home. I wanted to visit a friend of mine. I think he's sick. Her words made the cashier take a closer look at all the items she scanned. She didn't really care about your friend. He's lucky to have you. The pink-haired female smiled slightly. Having such a friendly conversation was really helping her come down. Seeing as the store was relatively empty and no one was waiting behind her, there was no rough for her to quickly get out of line again. Do you really think so? It's really kind for you to say that. Slowly and carefully, she put all the items she bought into a brown paper bag, handing, handing the woman the money. There you go. Have a nice evening, and be careful. I heard it's going to start raining soon. I'll let you read the next two and I'll finish it out. Oh, oh shit, I didn't realize. <laughs> it's okay. I, um, I pay attention, so you don't have to. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I, I never know how to pay attention. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Internally, Hardy couldn't help but let out an annoyed sigh. It'll start raining soon? Great. Can this day get any worse? It just starts downpouring. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, I, like, I did get, like, one of those alerts, and it's like, a hurricane has been spotted downplanting in your exact area. <laughs> Shaking her head, she put, she put the change in her pockets over, I feel like Hardy wears pants, before giving mm -hmm. the woman one last smile. Thank you for the advice. I'll be careful. Since it'll begin raining, maybe I should take the bus, she thought, while leaving the store. Hurrying over to one of the stops and soon getting on said vehicle. Just in time, relief washed over her as she looked out the window and saw the rain. When the bus, sto had, when the bus had stopped, it had already stopped raining again, even though only by a few minutes. It also didn't take long for Hardy's hot ham and cheese to find Byakia's home. The giant mansion was impossible not to see. Hopefully the family is nice, but from what he told me, she quickly stopped to think, and think about it. Ring the loud but fancy sounding doorbell. Someone who looked like a servant opened the door. May I help you? The male looked around, unsure about why she was standing on their doorstep. Yes, you can. Is uh, Byakuya home? I didn't see him at school today. For a few moments, uncomfortable silence laid over itself leading the male to clearing his throat. <clears> throat. I'm sorry, are you a friend of his? If so, I could give you his contact information. Master Byakia did not come home yet. Her blood practically froze in her veins. He didn't? Well, no, he, uh, he did not. He turned around, grabbing a piece of paper, writing a row of numbers down. There you go, mm -hmm. handing it out to her. Mm -hmm. He then took the bag, I will give these to the young master when he comes home. Goodbye. Have a nice evening. The door was shut rather quickly, making her blink a few times. Wow. Rude. She quickly looked down at the note she was given, pulling out her phone while distancing herself from the property, walking back to the bus station. The mailman would have been nicer if I decided to send him all that stuff. She, she <clears throat> dialed the number. Rang for a long time, and no one picked up. Did I type in the wrong number? Hardy's hot ham and cheese tried again, once more without any success. Come on, he's really not even picking up his own phone? All the while, she didn't notice the purple-haired female in the distance. <laughs> Do you, he's dead. We'll never see him ever again. Oh, fucking over. It's over. It's over. 
our, our boy has been murdered. You, you, you know, you know, with all the, all this, all the simping, as you put it, mm. all the simping. I, I don't know if I can condone this. I, 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 just, I just fucked up. Well, I you gotta do that to me, bro. You know, I think I can get past it. You know. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I think I can. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know what? Yeah, you, 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 you convinced me. You talked me into it. Yeah, sometimes you're so down bad that that's, that's, <laughs> are, the, are the flags really that red? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more of a pinkish color to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's just got a little bit of like an, an orange hue too. I think. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they They're actually very, don't even very look like tangerine. red. Yeah, <laughs> they don't actually don't look like uh, red red flags if you wear like rose colored glasses, and everything looks red to you. Exactly. <laughs> Such is the joys of life. Uh, all right, chapter five. Let's uh, let's pick it up. Pick up the phone, Hardy Hoft. What could be important enough to skip school and not show up at home? Hmm. The pink-haired female then decided to walk home. She didn't feel like taking the bus again. Needs a fresh air to clear her mind. Occasionally, she would turn around, having an extreme feeling of being watched. Definitely need a hot shower. <laughs> so what is watching me? And I have no privacy. privacy. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need a hot shower when I get home. I'm going crazy. <laughs> crazy? I was crazy one. Her yellow <laughs> eyes scanned her surroundings. They weren't really, there wasn't really a spot that anyone to get hide away too easily. So who was supposed to, be, to who was supposed to watch her? <sighs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a safe neighborhood. I shouldn't be worried about a potential stalker. She said to herself, considering the streets were empty anyways. Besides, aren't all those weirdos found in big cities? The next big city might be close, but it doesn't mean that there are dangerous people here. Nah, this is the south side of Chicago. Put your hands up. Oh my god. <laughs> Hardy's hot ham and cheese just couldn't stop rambling to herself. In an attempt to calm herself down, she really wanted to believe that she wasn't being followed, even though her gut feeling was practically screaming at her while twisting her stomach to make her feel bad and scared. It's called, uh, your biology. <laughs> Are you sure about that? The voice that suddenly spoke in her ear made her freeze. It was menacing, and it sounded like it belonged to a murderer. It's very, very general. A murderer that had fun with what they were doing. Well, what was she doing? It was definitely a female that had spoken to her. As quickly as she could, the ham-pink-haired female uh, student turned around tripping over her own foot and falling to the ground, scraping open her knee. Who just said that? She looked around. No one. Not a single soul could be found. Was she really going crazy? Yeah, I think you should. You you are going crazy. You're, you're imagining it all. Yeah, this is like, a new level of paranoia. <laughs> exactly. Gaslighting? What the fuck is that? You're making that up. Yeah. So up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking down at her bleeding knee made her realize that maybe she should stop searching. At least until she felt better about her mental state. The fetus mindset. Yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. This is so. This was frustrating. Making her cover her face with her hands. I can't believe I'm starting to hear voices already. <laughs> yeah, what is this fucking... Oh, it's schizophrenia. That's right. Yeah. So at least she stood up again, uncovering her face and looking around. It wasn't far anymore until she reached her own home. Biakia, this is your fault that I'm all worked up. <laughs> that damn girl that you warned me about is making me go crazy. You little... She sighed. No, it's not his fault. If I didn't try to invade his privacy like that, I wouldn't have gotten all stressed out. I'm sure he's well and just taking some time to himself. She looked up at the sky and so it became darker. Even if it doesn't make sense. Another sigh escaped her lips before she started walking mm -hmm. again, reflecting on all the things that had happened the previous days. She wasn't sure if someone, that girl much less, was really stalking her. Maybe she was stressed out and her mind was playing tricks on her, but that doesn't really make sense either. When Hardy's hot ham and cheese finally got home to beautiful, 
Carl's Jr. location that she calls home. Her thoughts were all over the place. Confusion, anger, and fear. All of those emotions were not willing to let go of her. Following throughout the rest of the evening, the paranoia was the worst of them all, though. In the shower, she thought that someone was standing in her bathroom, leading her to hurrying everything up. After getting ready for bed, she was afraid of the darkness that was lingering in her bedroom. Everything was freaking her out. I... I hope... She gulped. I hope I will feel normal again soon. Don't we all? Don't we all, baby girl? Don't we all? How the fuck is this gonna turn into, like, uh, like, <laughs> that we're, we're gonna fall in love with Toko at this point? We're very scared of her. This is gonna be some fucking, like, Stockholm Syndrome shit. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. For it? Okay, you know what? You might be tooped down bad. Go sit in the horny jail for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, you're, you're the one that you're the one that tied me up on this. Yeah, yeah, and I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy groaned, rolling over in bed and trying to find her phone while her eyes are closed. Her ringtone had woken her up. How late is it? She didn't want to pick up her phone. Her inner clock told her it was still way too early. Who could be calling me at 3 a.m.? Fuck that! Wow. And just turn over, fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was an unknown number, causing her to be fully awake why would an unknown number wake me up at this time who would she gulped closing her eyes and taking a deep breath her gut feeling told her that she shouldn't pick up what if it is a stalker the person that's been following me for the entire week she was scared scared to death to be exact if i pick up and it's a stalker that could track me what do i do how about you just not pick up the phone that's that's yeah. that's a great option her it phone is a kept great option. Her phone kept ringing, seemingly getting louder. But a great option is also answering it. Yeah. Just to get the story to progress. <laughs> Wait, no. That's dumb. If they were able to track me, they would already know everything. So what does it matter if I pick up the phone? In the end, they know where I live either way, don't they? The... I mean, you live at Hardy's. The... <clears throat> pink-haired female took another long, deep breath. Hello? She held the phone against her ear, but didn't hear a single sound. H hello is someone there? Again, no answer, causing her to just hang up again. What the hell is going on? An unknown call at 3 a.m.? No one answers? What's happening here? She leaned back quietly. I should just go back to sleep. Panicking and speculating won't help anyone. Slowly, female lay down again making sure to put a, her phone far away from herself. No one will disrupt my sleep again. When she was about to fall asleep, her phone rang once more. Oh boy. Damn. Wonder who it could be. What do you want? What is wrong with you? Why do you keep calling <laughs> me? I'm sick of this stalking shit. I swear I will call the police if you don't stop this. You're a sick person. Why don't you leave me alone? <laughs> Hardy was more than just upset as she screamed. For a few seconds, wrestling could be heard on the other side of the line. What? You don't want to see your friend again? <laughs> she froze. It was the same voice from the other day. That voice that had whispered in her ear. This can't be. Where? Where is he? What did you do with Byakia? While she yelled at the mysterious person, she quickly jumped into some fresh clothes, running to the door of her home. Do you know the old factory that is said to be haunted? I'll give you ten minutes. <laughs> what? Incoming? The laugh that followed the person's words made her shiver. How could someone be that cruel? All right. We're quickly hanging the phone up. She called the police, informing them about everything she knew. And since it was a member of the Togami family, they immediately took the case very seriously. We will be there soon. But the pink-haired female student couldn't be bothered to wait alone. Even though she knew how stupid and dangerous it was to, to go alone, her feet seemed to have a mind of their own, carrying her towards the building as fast as they could. And what she saw made her let out a scream. There, there he was. Biakia had been tied to a chair, silenced by a piece of tape over his mouth. Tagami! 
What the fuck happened here? Who, who did this? It made him yelp when she ripped off the tape. You want to know who did it? Uh, I think it's very, very obvious. Don't call evil Toko Fukawa 3 I'm scary, not clickbait. <laughs> Thank you, commenter. I had STFU. It's beautiful. Yeah, you should also not call call Toko at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chapter I seven. <laughs> I, you would. I would call her you at would. 3 a.m. I would call her whenever I damn pleased. You're no, right. No, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wonder who did this. Harney was more than just panicked. Her hands were sweaty and shaky, arms weak, mom's spaghetti. Her eyes looked around the room already. Mom's... <laughs> <laughs> the paranoia that, that had her in her firm grasp wasn't letting go, letting go of her or her mind. I, the blonde laid his head back. Just in time, you first. Did you call the police? It amazed her of how he could stay this calm, even though he was the one that had been kidnapped and tied up in an abandoned building. Of course I did. I'm not an idiot. Her response made him chuckle quietly. He, he may have been acting all tough and cold, but it was obvious that he was getting weaker by the moment. Just when, just then, sirens could be heard in the distance. I called them when I left my house. I knew it could be dangerous. Going back to your question, I don't think you're ready to hear this. Especially since I told you to stay away from her. His words were like a slap in the face. What? Are you sure it was her? He shook his head. Not entirely sure, though I remember the purple hair. Days had passed after the police had took her and Biaki's accounts. They had made sure to search the whole neighborhood for someone with purple hair. Someone that fit the blonde's description. But they could not find anyone. And no one saw a person like that either. Since then, the pink-haired, uh, <laughs> Hardy's hot ham and cheese couldn't have bothered to come to school. She was scared, scared to no end. The person that had been stalking her maybe was a kidnapper. A potential killer. How could anyone stay calm after something like that? It was clear that the yellow, I mean pink haired female needed some recovery. I can't believe you got her hair color messed up, man. That's some Yeah, I'd be fucking up. I'd be fucking up. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that her now, now that her friend had her number, he surprised her by occasionally checking up on her. He didn't know why exactly she was hiding. She didn't have the guts to tell him about what happened in his absence, but he figured it had something to do with Toko Fukawa. Sometimes, while she was hiding under her blanket at night, he would send her a funny pictures and videos. It just has like it has like the fucking like I funny like, uh, little <laughs> thing at the bottom. <laughs> well, maybe people that were over the age of fifty would find these videos funny. Yes, she appreciate the thought behind it. She thought. That he wasn't experienced when it came to friendship. No, I mean, very, yes. <laughs> wow. A cat falling from a bed. Funny. The pink haired oh, female. <laughs> I had to laugh a little. Her, f her friend really sent her whatever appeared first on his recommendation page. You could at least watch the video yourself, you brat. <laughs> she giggled once more. Coming out from underneath her blanket. <clears throat> Yes, the uh, videos were re never really funny to her. The thing that was, however, was the fact that he seemed to use their chat as a trash bin for all the things that he didn't want to see on his phone, Think thinking she might like all of them. But all of the attempts of cheering me up still can't get rid of my fear entirely. I know it's kind of wrong to keep quiet about it. I'm just really scared of what he might think of me. He might think I provoked Toko Fukawa. Which then caused her to snap. Hardy's hot ham and cheese closed her eyes again. This whole thing wasn't... This whole thing really wasn't easy to deal with. Then again, he suspected Toko of being the culprit, so he knows that she isn't sane at all. Burying her face in her hands, she decided to soon tell, try and tell him about everything that had happened. Imagine oh if she's just in her closet or somewhere in her mm -hmm. house, damn. 
This is turning <laughs> into the closing shift at this point, man. <laughs> oh, sweet. Opera GX finally worked and blocked an ad. Holy shit. Let's go. No more, no more chances of seeing Hardee's. No, I never get to see the Burger King Whopper ever again now. <laughs> I can no longer go Whopper, Whopper, Whopper. <laughs> chicken, 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 chicken. Italian spicy bacon <laughs> chicken. Biakia looked around the library. It had been two weeks since the incident happened, and Hardy was still not coming back to school. He just couldn't understand why. After all, he was the victim of the case. Why was she the one that was hiding away from everyone? He had tried to talk to her about her issue. He really did, but she refused to tell him a single detail about what happened while she, he was gone. It, it felt bad. Bianca was the kind of person that didn't like it when secrets were kept from him. Ironically, Toko wasn't coming to school either anymore. It would have been idiotic for her to continue stalking me after everything that she did to me. I always thought she was rather stupid, though. Maybe I was wrong about that. He pushed up his glasses, looking around the room one more time. I never thought I would say this, but I do miss Hardy's hot ham and cheese. I enjoyed our qu conversations quite a lot. Slowly he stood up. Maybe I should take a small walk to clear my mind. In the meantime, she has enough time to text or call me. While walking through the buildings and towards its exit, the blonde noticed that someone was following him. So, she is in school. I thought she wasn't, since she seemed to have left me alone. And that's something that's very unusual for her, so why is she following me again then? What's her goal? Does she want to kidnap me again? As unnoticeable as he could, the ultimate affluent progeny pulled out his phone, sending a quick message to his friend. I think Fukawa is following me again. He didn't bother to tell her that she should contact him. That wouldn't work on her anyways. She was still in hiding. To his surprise, he actually received the message back. In a matter of seconds, as if she had been waiting for him to text her. Why do I have the feeling that she's been on her phone the whole day? Doesn't that get boring after some time? Yes. Yeah, very. <laughs> really? Just be careful. Maybe she's planning something again. After that, she stopped replying to him once again. What the... Is she really this unwilling to talk about it? She... He mumbled before sighing. Alright, I'll take that... I'll take more drastic measures. Text me your address. I'm coming over. What? Fine. Biakia knew that he had to get rid of the person following him. If he didn't, he'd be putting his friend in danger. He wouldn't... He wouldn't know... They wouldn't have- they- fuck. They wouldn't know where Hardy lived. It was definitely an information that they could've- they couldn't have access to. He was completely sure of it. Stop following me, he said, without turning around. The footsteps immediately stopped and a familiar gasp could be heard. I will only be saying this once, Fukawa. I hope you take my warning seriously. Finally. He turned his head to the, into the purple-haired female's direction, looking into her shocked face. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I... As embarrassed as she was shy as always, the ultimate riding prodigy could only nod and grab onto her braids. Good. Oh, and uh, one more thing. The blonde crossed his arms, pushing his glasses up once again. If you try and come close to one of us once more... Dramatic pause he made seem seemed to be crushing her. I will contact my family's lawyer, make sure to file a restraining order against you, and get out of my sight. Watching her hurry off into one of the classrooms made him feel so much more at ease. Finally, she's gone. Yay, the stalker's gone, but also no No more baby! <laughs> Come back! Come Alright, so... You think... You think maybe after this next one is probably a good place to, uh... To wind it down a little, and then we can finish, uh, the other half. Yeah, I was just time. thinking that. Because there's just 18 yeah. parts. I mean, we're going through... We're, we're going through this we're pretty... We're trucking this shit. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's Toko Fukawa! 
How could yeah, we I, not? How could we not? Exactly. <laughs> All right, then. Then this will be our final. Thanks for checking up on me. I, I guess Hardy really <laughs> wasn't in her best state. Settling down, I was setting down the cup of tea that she was drinking from. No problem. Biakia pushed up his glasses before letting out a, a long sigh. Are you willing to talk about what happened? <laughs> her eyes, her, his words made her freeze. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have anything to tell you. Another sigh escaped his lips. Yes, of course. So why are you hiding away from home? You're clearly not sick or injured. Actually, you seem to have been traumatized by something. <laughs> Do you like the Yakuya voice? <laughs> yes, I do. It's so I him. Do indeed. For a few um, moments, sure both of them are quiet. I... Yeah, something happened. It was something to do with Fukawa, but... Her yellow eyes looked at the side. But it isn't really a good explanation of why I was hiding from everyone and everything. Maybe I'm just extremely overreacting. What happened? The blonde didn't answer the last two sentences, knowing it, that it didn't matter right now if it was extremely bad or not. The only thing that was important was that Hardy's hot ham and cheese was finally opening up to him. So, what did Fukawa do? Didn't I tell you to stay away from her? Almost angrily, she huffed, turning her head away from him. You're funny. You really are. She looked at him again. I did stay away from her. I ignored her whole existence. At that, I acted as if she was air. As if she was nothing. That's it. She was. He was slightly surprised by her raised voice, slowly nodding. I see. That was all he was able to say before she began to talk again. I looked around the whole school for you when you were gone. Because I was quite worried, you know. It wasn't just like you to just vanish. That's true, I guess. He nodded again. I know that it's true. The pink-haired female rolled her eyes. And while I was... Oh, shit. <laughs> That's Biagi. <laughs> and while I was working, working... Oh, shit. Looking around the building, I heard footsteps behind me. Wherever I went, I was able to hear footsteps. Someone was following me. Oh shit, that was her. Fuck! <laughs> it's fine, yeah, roll with it. <laughs> it's chillin', it's chillin', roll. <laughs> she, she took a deep breath, trying to calm herself down. I ran to the bathroom, and the person, probably Toko, opened the door and left me alone. It was Psycho Terra. She even sabotaged the door so I couldn't hear it close. After that, she's been following her all around to your house. The ultimate affluent prodigy didn't notice that he was holding his breath yeah. until he finally breathed in again. I will contact my lawyer. Finishing his cup of tea, he, s <laughs> he stood up. You're my friend. I will let her do the same thing she did to me. You sound like Alan from Smiling Friends. Oh, thanks. I don't know who that is. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> Flap. Did you take my paper clip? <laughs> <laughs> that night... Hardy's hot ham and cheese was thinking about going back to school the very next day. Conversation they had had calmed her down. I will sleep, probably sleep better tonight, much better tonight. But before she could even close her eyes, it knocked on her door. It was really, really late. Did Biakia forget something? But he didn't even have anything with him, did he? Slowly and sleepily, the girl stood up freeing herself from the warm and comforting blankets. It was times like these where she was thankful for the small door viewer that she had. Weird. There's nobody out there. At that point, she wasn't sure whether she was supposed to be scared or not, or annoyed. Opening the door quietly, nobody was there. Just a little box on the doorstep. It was wrapped in... Uh... FC, what would FC be? Favorite What's color. F favorite color. Okay, well, I, I should just went with the color, honestly. Green. <laughs> green wrap. A green wrapping paper. What the hell is this? Who? She didn't notice the person watching from some nearby bushes. 
Actually, nice. it's we, a we get pipe it. bomb. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking IED. You are being nail bombed. Fuck oh my, you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it ended on a cliffhanger too. I, I think I think we should end it here. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> this is a work of art. I, I love Indeed. this so far. I don't know how this is going to turn to a romance, but uh, we'll sure try. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how uh, it turned. I don't know how we are Biakia's friend is my thing. Uh, that's my thing. How can we not be friends with Biakia Togami, man? True. I don't know how I got here, but uh, I'm, I'm living in the it. moment. Yeah. I'm living in the moment. Yeah, j j don't question how we got here. Just live for it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What were your final thoughts on this right now? Even though we're only halfway through, what is, what is your verdict so far? I think it's actually pretty well written. Uh, the, this one, I think. I think some of them, some of them have sort of outlandish, uh, some outlandish plot points. But this, this kind of, this kind of seems like the, it's very in character for most of this cast. Yeah. In Biakia, but you know, with Biakia, you kind of have to work with him. So I mean, like, I think they did a great job. Yeah. With that. No, I'll give it eight out of ten. It might go up depending on how they write the ending of this, because I I need to know how the fuck is this gonna be an X reader? We're we're being stalked by her, and we kind of like are scared for our life. Unless it is gonna be a Stockholm syndrome kind of thing, which yeah, that yeah, would be yeah, interesting. I, <laughs> I like I like that it doesn't uh, it doesn't really contain too much romance stuff too. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of there's build up. There's things going on. There's a lot of things that are going things that are going on. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. It's really cool. That's uh, a nice little uh, story. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to read again at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Thanks for yes. joining, man. I highly appreciate it. And and um, and the next time I will be on here, we'll. Uh, not not be too much longer. I hope. Uh, like I said, uh, Philip's back. Philip's yeah. back. So I say. Philip's back. Back again. Philip's back. Tell a friend. <laughs> yes. Yes. Eminem released Houdini, and I came back as well. So uh, yeah. you know, uh, that's just the way things go. That's just the way things go. Yeah. We disappear. We come back. I, I do a little bit of interdimensional traveling. What, what of it? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank thank you for joining, Philip. On on screen is uh, a bunch of like other Wattpad book club readings, all condensed into one playlist. So if that interests you, it is on screen somewhere. I don't know. I, I'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Philip, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.